The first four problems involve us solving trigonometric equations over the interval 0 to 2 pi. Uh, this first one is one in which I can simply get the trig function by itself by adding the square root of 3 over to the right hand side. Once the trig function is by itself, now I'm ready to solve for the variable. And so what I want to know is at which angles x does cotangent equal square root of 3. Now for cotangent I'm thinking to myself uh, the cotangent function is equal to the x over y of the coordinate point. So I want some x comma y point that would reduce to that value right there. And so what I'm after is the point that has square root of 3 over 2 comma 1 half. Okay, so I have to think to myself, on the circle, where is that point? And that point is over a lot, up a little. That point is right here, which would put us at pi over 6. Okay, so that's an answer. There's one other answer. Um, I could also have it come out to be positive square root of 3 if both of these were negative. So if it was to the left and down, if it was down here, it would also work. And that angle is 7 pi over 6. Problem 2, same directions as the first one. Um, I'm going to begin by getting the trig function by itself, so I can go with cosine squared x equals, uh, I'll do two steps here, we'll add the 1, divide by the 2, so 1 half. I can get cosine by itself if I take the square root of both sides, so that would be equal to plus and minus square root of 1 half. And now simplifying square root of 1 half cosine x equals plus or minus, this would simplify to square root of 2 over 2. Okay, So we want all the places, all the angles on the unit circle where cosine is equal to positive or negative square root of 2 over 2. Uh, there are four of these such angles and they're at all the all the 45's in each quadrant. So we're going to be at pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4. Example 3, another trig equation to solve. Um, what I need to do first is group all the terms on the same side of the equal sign. So I'm going to leave the 4 sine cubed x. I'm going to subtract the 3 sine x to join it. Now I notice that there's a common factor of sine x. So if I take a sine out of each of these I'm left with 4 sine squared minus 3 equals 0. Uh, once we're in a factored state I can take this factor set it equal to 0 and I'll take this factor and set it equal to 0. So if I'm just looking at this only um, set equal to 0. The first couple of things I would do is I would add 3, divide by 4, I would get sine squared equals 3 fourths. Then I would take the square root of both sides, I get plus and minus square root of 3 over 2. Okay, now I need to look up solutions to this equation and solutions to this equation here. So we've got x equals, where is sine 0 means at what points on the circle is the y value equal to 0 and the y value would be equal to 0 at 0 and pi. Also at 2 pi but remember we're not including 2 pi. The rounded means don't include it. We don't include it because it's just a repeat of the same angle at 0. 
Now we also want to know where is the sine equal to plus and minus square root of 3 over 2. Uh, those are all the y values that have um, all the y points uh, where this is the coordinate. So I would want, um, let's see, that would be pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3. And this last trig equation to solve is just uh, kind of your standard quadratic trinomial. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set up some binomial factors. We would have to factor with 2 cosine x times cosine x to get 2 cosine squared. And if I go with minus 1, minus 1, they multiply to positive 1, and the outside inside would add to the negative 3 that we want. So in this factored state, we solve this factor, add and divide, and this one we're just going to have to add. So I want all the places where cosine is equal to a half. And notice here it's just positive a half. Don't get carried away with plus and minus signs and do plus and minus a half. Just positive half. So it's equal to positive half at pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. And then I want all the places where cosine is equal to 1. And again, this is just positive 1. And that's just going to happen at 0. Okay, on this next problem, we've got something a little bit different now, finally. Find the exact values of sine 2 theta, cosine 2 theta, and tan 2 theta, given that sine of theta is, um, and there's a typo here. Let's just change that to positive 4 fifths, and theta is in quadrant 2. So first thing I might do with any type of problem like this is let's sketch the triangle and complete the triangle. So if sine is 4 fifths, that would be opposite over hypotenuse, and in quadrant 2, the adjacent is going to be negative. So we're looking at a 3, 4, 5 right triangle with the 3 being negative. We want first sine of 2 theta. Um, now you can only do this, and I'll stress this, you can only do this with the double angle identity formula, which is 2 sine theta cosine theta. I have many students over the years that just want to take this answer here and take it times 2. And that's going to be incorrect, and it's going to be incorrect every single time. So you've got to expand it this way. So we have 2 times the sine of theta is 4 fifths. The cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, so negative 3 fifths. That comes out to be, I'll go with 2 times 4 times negative 3, so I get negative 24 25ths. There's the sine of 2 theta. The cosine of 2 theta. We again need the formula for cosine of a double angle, and it is cosine squared minus sine squared. So we want the cosine, which is negative 3 fifths squared, minus the sine, which is 4 fifths squared. Um, this one is going to score to positive 9. This one's going to score to 16. 9 minus 16 is negative 7. And it will also be over 20 fifths because it's 5 squared and 5 squared, common denominator of 25. And then finally we want the tangent of 2 theta. There is a formula for that. There's also just the, the quotient identity that says tangent is equal to sine over cosine. So I'm just going to take my sine answer divided by my cosine answer. Of course the 25's drop out, the negatives make positive, and this is 24 sevenths. Next problem says find the exact value of cosine 15 degrees using a half angle formula. So half angle formula cosine of something over 2. I want the something to be uh, something such that when we divide by 2 we get 15. So we'll use 30 divided by 2. 
equals formulas plus or minus big square root, it's 1 plus cosine of whatever angle this is. So I'm going to use 30 over 2. Okay, the plus and minus, um, well that depends on where this is. And in quadrant 1, all angles are positive, so it's not going to be negative. And I of course don't have to continue to write a plus to indicate positive, so I'm just going to drop that. We have 1 plus, I need to know what the cosine of 30 degrees is. The cosine of 30 degrees, square root of 3 over 2, and it's over 2. So what I'm going to do is change all the terms into fractions. I'm going to change them all to fractions over 2. So I make it 2 over 2 plus square root of 3 over 2 divided by 4 over 2. And that allows me to take all these common denominators of 2 and wipe them out. So we now have, let's come over here, square root of 2 plus square root of 3 over 4 which is going to become the square root of 2 plus square root of 3 over 2. Problem number 7 is an example of a sum and difference formula. Here I see cosine of a difference. So I need to use my, my sum formula for cosine. So it will be cosine of alpha minus beta is equal to, now the cosine formula, if you recall the first term has both cosines. The cosine expansion formula flips the sign between them. That will be sine alpha sine beta. Okay, so what do we know? Um, we know sine alpha that's given to us right there. We also know it looks like cosine of beta. Okay, that's right here. Uh, what we're lacking, and what we need in order to finish this problem, is we need to know what the cosine of alpha and the sine of beta is. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a couple of right triangles so I can help get the parts that I need. Here's one for alpha. Here's one for beta. Uh, I did put them in quadrant one on purpose, not just a random drawing. Uh, so sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse makes that four. Cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse makes that twelve. Um, and now from these triangles we can get the other pieces that we need. So cosine alpha. Cosine alpha is from that triangle four fifths. Cosine beta was given to us or from the triangle is five thirteenths. Sine alpha was given to us or you can get it from the triangle is three fifths. And sine beta we needed the triangle for that's twelve thirteenths. Okay, multiplying from here we get 20 over 65 plus 36 over 65, we get 56 over 65. And if it reduces, you want to go ahead and reduce it. If it doesn't reduce, well then we're done.